smiling mosque massacre shooter makes a white supremacist sign with his hand. Accused Christchurch massacre gunman Brenton Harrison Tarrant has made a white power gesture from behind a glass window during a brief appearance in court. Tarrant, 28, originally from Grafton, New South Wales but more recently a resident of Dunedin on New Zealand's South Island, was dressed in a white custody outfit with a black sash around his waist. Flanked by two much taller armed security officers, Terran smiled faintly as he stood behind a small glass barrier which came up just above his eyes. Police allege that after opening fire inside the Al Nir Mosque, Terran drove to the Linwood Masjid Mosque across town and continued his rampage. A second man, Daniel John Burrow. 18, has also been charged with exciting hostility or ill will in relation to the mosque attacks but he did not appear in court. Members of the public were banned from entering the court during the proceedings, but one man outside tried to break in during the hearing. He said he wanted to knife the accused attacker and showed reporters the weapon he was carrying. So far 49 people have been confirmed dead, including at least one child, while dozens more remain missing. Short of stature with a stocky build, with thinning hair and beady brown eyes, Terrence stood squarely in place throughout the entire hearing. He swiveled his torso around to repeatedly glance at the media. At District Court Judge Paul Caller and out the windows of the Christchurch District Court. At the beginning of the hearing he appeared to have a faint smile on his face, but it faded into a neutral expression as the hearing continued. Security was tight, with about six security guards and police in total, the guards wearing black protective vests. No members of the public were allowed to attend except for media and the interests of public safety, the judge said. Tarrant was remanded in custody. His duty lawyer did not apply for bail. He has been charged with one count of murder but police say many more charges are expected to be laid. The hearing was all over in just a few minutes. With Terran taking one final look at those gathered and marched away. He is due to reappear in the High Court on April 5. Terran was photographed and filmed in court by New Zealand cameras but they have been ordered to pixelate his face and images from inside court. Burrow has also been charged with intent to excite hostility or ill will against any group of persons in New Zealand and publishing written matter which is insulting, court documents said. Another man remains in custody, and police are still trying to build a picture of any of the individuals involved and all of their activities prior to his horrific event. Police Commissioner Mike Bush he confirmed the death toll stands at 49, with 42 injured. He said that after receiving the initial emergency call at 1.42 p.m. local time, police took 36 minutes to track down and detain Terran. That is an incredibly fast response time. You had a mobile offender across large metropolitan city. I am very happy with the response of our staff, Bush said. Police arrested three men, including Tarrant and Burrow, and a woman following Friday's attacks. Commissioner Bush said that the third man was spotted carrying a gun by a police officer, but after questioning it was revealed the man was on his way to collect his children from school and took the weapon to protect himself. 
In terms of people who have been charged, we have, as you know, we apprehended four people on the day, Mr. Bush said. And was released quite early, a member of the public who just wanted to get their kids home, but decided to take a firearm. The first victims of the terror attack have been confirmed as Haji Dod Nabi, 71, Naeem Rashid and his son Talha, 21. Mr. Rashid could be seen in the chilling live stream of the attack at Al Nir Mosque attempting to prize the gun from the grip of Tehran. Two of Mr. Nabi's sons Omar, 43, and Iyama, 45, appeared outside Christchurch District Court on Saturday morning where they shared photos and stories of their father. Omar said his dad was one of the first Muslims in New Zealand, moving to Christchurch in 1977 and opening the Tuam Street Mosque after discovering the country was a slice of paradise. There are fears that several children who had accompanied their fathers to Friday prayers were killed when the gunmen opened fire. Among them is three-year-old Makad Ibrahim who was last seen at the Dean's Avenue Mosque with his father and brother Abti. The accused gunman Brenton Harrison Tarrant grew up in the rural New South Wales town of Grafton. But left the area in his early 20s following the death of his father Rodney to cancer. He spent up to seven years travelling the world from 2011 onwards, and one woman who knew him before he left Grafton speculated to Daily Mail Australia that something happened to him during this time. She also recognized him as being the man in the massacre video. Terran claimed in a so-called manifesto to have made money trading Bitcoin, enabling him to travel the world. He also spoke of visiting a wide range of countries including Pakistan, and a photograph showed him on a tourist trip to North Korea. A picture posted on social media by a Pakistani hotel manager in 2018 appears to show him in the country during his time abroad. But at some point he seems to have become obsessed with terrorist attacks that happened in Europe's between 2016 and 2017. His ranting manifesto was filled with neo-Nazi ideology and hatred for Muslim people. Prosecutors in Bulgaria have launched a probe into Tehran's recent visit to the country. He visited Bulgaria from November 9 to 15 last year claiming he wanted to visit historical sites and study the history of the Balkan country, according to Bulgaria's public prosecutor Sodor Tsisarov. Tsisarov said he hoped the inquiry would establish if this was correct or if he had other objectives. One woman who knew Tarrant before he left Grafton said he worked as a personal trainer who was obsessed with fitness but seemed like a well-adjusted young man. In a twisted manifesto that he posted online before the massacre, Tarrant described himself as an ordinary, white man who was born into a working-class, low-income family of Scottish, Irish and English descent. The gunman wrote that he had little interest in education growing up, and did not attend university as he had no great interest in anything offered as the schools. He claimed he made some money investing in BitConnect, a type of digital currency before he then used the money to travel overseas. Tarrant, who would later go on to become a personal trainer, inherited a love of physical fitness from his father, who reportedly died of an asbestos-related illness. A woman who claims to have previously known Tarrant through the gym, 
alleged it was him in the live stream. She told Daily Mail Australia that he followed a strict dietary and exercise regime and worked at the gym after he finished school. The woman, who did not wish to be named, said Terran always threw himself into his own personal training before he later became a qualified a trainer and started training others. He was very dedicated to his own training and to training others, she said. He was in the gym for long periods of time, lifting heaving weights. He pretty much transformed his body, she said. The woman also said she had not spoken to him or heard him talk about his political or religious beliefs. From the conversations we had about life he didn't strike me as someone who had any interest in that or extremist views, she said. But I know he's been traveling since he left Grafton. He has been traveling overseas, anywhere and everywhere. I would say it's something in the nature of his travels, something he's been around. I know he's been to lots of different countries trying to experience lots of different things in life and I would say something's happened in that time in his travels, she said. In a previous Facebook message about the trip to Pakistan on Facebook, he wrote, an incredible place filled with the most earnest, kind-hearted and hospitable people in the world, the Sydney Morning Herald reported. The beauty of Hansa and Nagar Valley in autumn cannot be beat, he stated. Tarrant allegedly entered the Al Nur Mosque on Friday during afternoon prayers and opened fire, capturing the attack on a camera strapped to his helmet. That distressing video streamed to his Facebook profile shows a man firing more than 100 shots at those inside. The guns were scrawled with the names of past mass killers and cities where the shootings occurred. The alleged gunman's rampage began when he got into his car wearing military-style body armor and a helmet saying let's get this party started. He then drove to the mosque listening to a Serbian folk song glorifying war criminal Rado Von Karadzic and military tunes before parking in an alley around the corner. After retrieving one of at least six guns stored in his car, he walked up to the front door and began firing indiscriminately at worshippers inside. The gunman stormed inside and fired quick bursts at anyone he saw. One wounded man tried to crawl away but was shot again after he calmly reloaded. He fired into crowds of huddled worshippers, sometimes not even looking where he was shooting and reloading numerous times. When the sound of his gun stopped between magazines, the moaning of wounded people could be heard until the shots began again. Several times he stood over wounded men, reloaded his gun, and shot them multiple times to make sure they were dead. Tarrant then walked outside and appeared to fire on at least two targets, returned to his car and swapped his shotgun for a rifle. Returning to the mosque he walked over to a pile of dead or wounded men in the room and began shooting them in the head to ensure they were dead. He then ran outside and shot another person he saw on the mosque's front lawn. The woman stumbled onto the street and was lying face down in the gutter yelling help me, help me as the shooter walked up to her. Tarrant calmly leaned over her and shot her twice in the head. Seconds later he returned to his car and drove over her body to make his escape, stopping to shoot at least one other person through his car window.
As he drove he expressed regret for not staying longer and burning the mosque to the ground. Two jerry cans of petrol were earlier seen to the back of his car. But, as T happens, he said. I left one full magazine back there, I know for sure. I had to run along in the middle of the firefight and pick it up. There wasn't even time to aim there were so many targets. There were so many people, the car park was full, so there's no real chance of improvement. Footage from within the Masjid Mosque later showed survivors tending to the wounded. In a manifesto seemingly written by Tarrant and shared to Twitter, he mentions being inspired by other shooters including Anders Breivik who killed 77 people in Oslo, Norway in 2011. He said he disliked Muslims and hated those who had converted to the religion, calling them blood traitors. Tarrant said he originally wanted to target a mosque in Uneden, south of Christchurch after watching a video on Facebook. But after visiting the mosques in Christchurch and Linwood and seeing the desecration of the church that had been converted to a mosque in Ashburton, my plans changed, he wrote. The Christchurch and Linwood mosques had far more invaders. He said he had been planning an attack for up to two years and decided on Christchurch three months ago. Peter said he was motivated to carry out the attack by the death of Swedish schoolgirl Leba Egerlund, a girl who was killed in a terrorist attack in Stockholm in April 2017. Aaron said he was a supporter of Donald Trump as a symbol of renewed white identity and common purpose. He described himself as just a regular white man. He said he was born to working class, low income family. Who decided to take a stand to ensure a future for my people. My parents are of Scottish, Irish and English stock. I had a regular childhood, without any great issues, he wrote. The gunman said he carried out the massacre to directly reduce immigration rates to European lands. Said New Zealand was not his original choice for the attack but said the location would show that nowhere in the world was safe. We must ensure the existence of our people, and a future for white children, he wrote. wrote that the shooting was an act of revenge on the invaders for the hundreds of thousands of deaths caused by foreign invaders in European lands throughout history. The enslavement of millions of Europeans taken from their lands by the Islamic slavers. For the thousands of European lives lost to terror attacks throughout European lands, the gunman wrote. shared photos to his now-removed Twitter account ahead of the attacks, showing weapons and military-style equipment. In posts online before the attack terror intro about taking the fight to the invaders myself. Art Earn condemned the attacker, saying, You may have chosen us, but we utterly condemn and reject you. My thoughts, and I'm sure the thoughts of all New Zealanders are with those who have been affected, and also with their families. Early reports indicated a shooting at Christchurch Hospital. However, Ms. Ardern said the mosques were the lone targets on one of New Zealand's darkest days. Dozens of families spent the night crowding the front doors of Christchurch Hospital. Unsure whether their loved ones had survived. One woman took to social media to ask whether anyone had seen her husband. Alamu alaikum, peace be with you, currently we still don't have any news on my husband. Please keep him on your prayer. The nation's terror threat level was elevated to high alert following the terror attacks, 
the second highest possible. However, police have confirmed there are no further suspects. New Zealand Police Commissioner Mike Bush confirmed the death toll had risen to 49 as of 9 p.m. local time. This is absolutely tragic. So many people are affected. We don't know the identities of those who have died yet because those places are in lockdown, he said in a statement at about 6 p.m. Speaking of the victims, Commissioner Bush said, Our love and thoughts go out to them and all of their family, all of their friends and all of their loved ones. He almost appraised local police officers who responded to the attacks.